Hello everybody, I'm here um, with my family, my brother Grant, my wife, your beautiful wife, my wife Morgan, my <laughs> lovely uh, mother, and me, Stephen Dufresne, we're all Dufresnes. We are, <laughs> and by choice. By choice, or by birth. Or by birth. And we're here talking about uh, my mother's new book, Victory Over Grief and Sorrow. Paul was writing and he said, God has delivered you from the kingdom of darkness, translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. So people need to realize they're delivered from grief and sorrow. Yeah. And um, we were going to talk about our experience of victory over this because when, when uh, my husband went home to be with the Lord, everybody at different times, you're going to face the opportunity to yield to grief and sorrow. It's gonna to come to you. And we have to know that we have victory over it. And many times people think that they're obligated to respond that with grief and sorrow because they think if they don't show grief or sorrow that someone went home to be with the Lord that they're dishonoring that person. Right. Mm -hmm. And grief is not a way to honor people. Yeah. Getting in sorrow is not a flow of honor. And so that's one of the things I think that's important about the teaching that's in this book because uh, the word says that to die is gain. Mm -hmm. And either we believe it's gain or if it's, or it's a sorrowful thing. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, the word says in Isaiah 53 verse four, it says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of what we're redeemed from. That's part of our inheritance package yeah. mm -hmm. is that we don't have to fall under the flow that grief would bring because then you get into depression, right? you get into fear, all these things that are, that are the outflow of death and uh, we're redeemed from it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I wanted, I had asked the family to, to come today because we wanted to talk about just how God brought us through a very yeah. difficult time because, and this isn't meant to be a, uh, a somber type teaching, but um, we just want people to know how great the word is yeah. to, and how conquering the word is to bring us through difficult times. Yeah. You know, many in the body of Christ, uh, they get under a flow of depression, fear, grief, sorrow, and they try to get delivered. But Paul said, he's already delivered us from it. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is to approach when tests and trials come that we have the right mindset, that we have our minds renewed to understand that it's not trying to get free from something, but it's not allowing your victory to be lost. The word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us for we're not ignorant of his devices. Well, the way Jesus took the advantage away, Mm -hmm. uh, from Satan. And Satan's constantly trying to get that advantage back. And um, when he took that advantage away, Satan is counting on something to get the advantage back, and it's called ignorance. And when people are ignorant about their victory over grief and sorrow, then Satan can get advantage of them. Yeah. And he can gain an entrance, a door into their life. And, uh, you know, the thing that we have to remember is when it tells us in Colossians that Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. Satan was there when that happened. He was yeah. the defeated one in that. Mm -hmm. He remembers, but he wants to keep the rest of the body of Christ from knowing that he is that defeated foe. That means grief is defeated. That means sorrow is defeated. Sickness is defeated mm -hmm. because everything that flows out of Satan has been defeated. And so when we approach tests and trials knowing it's already defeated and we're not trying to get victory over it, it's already defeated, we're already delivered from it, then your approach toward, uh, toward it is different when it shows up in our lives. You know, um, because we had, as a family, we had the opportunity to get into the flow of grief or sorrow, or we had the opportunity to stay in the flow of victory. Yeah. And we made a choice because we've yeah. been taught something. And, uh, you know, Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, he said, neither give place to the devil. Mm -hmm. So you can give place to grief. You can give place to sorrow. And if you have, you can take back the place you gave him. Mm -hmm. Satan can't get in unless you give him place. And uh, so we want people to know they don't have to give place to grief mm -hmm. and sorrow, even though tragedies may happen, crisis may happen. The emergencies of life come to everyone. Yeah. But you don't have to, when you're enlightened, you don't struggle the same way when you know what the Word says. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that I think is so important about the book. 
Uh, Morgan, you had said something. You gave me a testimony. There was a gal who, uh, a woman who, her husband was getting to the time when she knew he was going to be going home to be with the yes. Lord. And she read the book and gave a testimony. Yes, she had let it know it was a dear pastor friend of ours. And this couple had been in the church uh, for many, many, many years. So yeah. they weren't ignorant of the word. They understood. They were taught. Uh, right, where he's going to be going. Um, but their relation, the nature, nature of their relationship, they were so close. She was younger than him. Mm -hmm. And uh, she took this book, and I so appreciate this example that she read it four times before uh -huh. he went home. Many people wait Till whether Til it's, a crisis, hits. yes, a crisis, uh -huh. or they they have a financial need and then mm -hmm. they need to get financial or they get symptoms in their body. It, it, the principle is for any arena of our life uh, that you need to prepare. Um, and so I think this book, what she did with this book was she prepared and she had said, you know, had it been two years ago, she would have not been able to be ready and face uh, what she was facing. In fact, it, at the last few days of his life, she heard very clear instruction from the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. because she had read this book, got clarity, um, made a decision, which mm -hmm. is what you'd said. You just make a decision of which direction you're going to go. Mm -hmm. And um, when he went home to be with the Lord, she rejoiced uh, at his home going. Uh, the pastor, they had a wonderful service and she told the pastor, I'm, I'm ready to keep going to do what God has for me in my local yeah. church with no missteps. Well, when you think right, right about an event like that, then you know how to handle it. Yeah. And so that's, then she said another thing. She said in the times past when she would read any material that was with that subject. Yes. She, she made the statement, um, which, because uh, we don't read a lot of books, you know, on this, but maybe you have, maybe you have family members who've ha had a tragedy and they've taken, be it non-biblical uh, material or biblical material. She had read many, um, I guess, different books and so had her pastor. And these books tend to, she said, they always drew you in, she said, they always drew me into the emotion of the situation mm -hmm. instead of helping me uh, get past the emotion. And so, um, we're, we're not saying that there aren't other good, uh, materials, right. but she had noticed this was her observation and she faced a, a critical situation, um, a, a tragedy, what would have been a tragedy to some with your husband going home. And she said those other books, they didn't help me. Well, the thing that you have to understand is it's important in the approach because mm -hmm. if you approach it from a, an emotional right. position, you get drawn into emotions. Right. But when you approach it from the word, that's the important thing. Yes. And so much of the time people get entrenched in their emotions in those times. So they gravitate towards things that feed that. Yeah. And that's a real, that's a Processing real. Processing my emotions. Uh -huh. Okay. Well then this emotion comes and then in mm -hmm. a month, this emotion will come. And in because every months, one of us could have oh, yeah. felt the emotions of the situation. I mean, we're not robots. You feel it, but you right. don't, you just don't draw out of that, that right. arena. Right. And so we're going to spend some time in the upcoming episodes and each one of us talking about how God brought us, brought us into that place of peace and victory. And uh, because, uh, like I said, it's not, it's not to meant to be a negative or a somber or morbid type, uh, conversation that we're going to have, but everyone's going to face times when they're going to have to know what to do with their thought life, That's right. when they're going to have to know what to do with the words and how they, they interact with one another over a subject. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that we have to understand is that the word is our comfort. I want to read a scripture to you. Romans chapter five and verse four says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Amen. I like that phrase, comfort of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Many times people look for comfort in the wrong place. Yeah. They look for comfort out of sympathy. Mm -hmm. yeah. They look for comfort out of talking about it, talk it out. Mm -hmm. And here the word tells us that our comfort is found in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Meaning though, that we have to believe and draw on the comfort the scriptures give. So we're going to talk about that in upcoming mm -hmm. episodes. And mm -hmm. each one of us are going to take some time and just share what's on our heart about this subject because um, we're redeemed from it. Yeah. Yeah. 
we're redeemed from grief and sorrow. And like I said, I know having pastored for 25 years is in dealing with people, there was this common thread of thinking that if you love someone, then you show that when they're not there anymore, you show grief and that's how you show love. But I tell you what, the right. word redefines Amen. for us. And so we're going to we're going to take some time to talk about that. But we're so glad that you joined us and we're going to get further into this. So we look forward to the time together with you. And we thank you for joining us today on Dufresne Faith Journal. God bless you. If you want to get a copy of my mom's new book, Victory Over Grief and Sorrow, you can order your copy online at DufresneMinistries.org or give us a call at 951-696-9258. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for watching today's show. Be sure to check out all the latest episodes on our YouTube page. For more information, follow us on Facebook or visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org.